Hey, I'm Bill DeVille from The Current here at the Palace Theater with Clara and Johanna Soderberg. Did I say your name right? Yes. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> so nice to see you. I realize we've done this before. I think it was back in 2014, prior to your show at the Varsity Theater. Do you remember that show? No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I mean, I remember doing an interview, but I don't remember the show. Yeah. No. I I mean, if I saw, if I saw a picture, I probably remember it but yeah yeah it's always we've been doing a lot of shows for a long time a lot of shows for a long time yeah i looked up some of the dates uh, of some of the shows you've done here your first one was back on june 1st uh, around then in 2010 at the cedar cultural center then that one you had that what about the show with licky lee do you remember that at first avenue yeah, yes. yeah, absolutely. Yes. I remember that very clearly. And yeah. then there was shows at, uh, let's see, First Avenue. And this is your second one at the Palace. And, and remember the first time you were at the Palace? This is now five years ago already, which yes. is crazy to think. It yeah. is crazy. Yeah. yeah, everything is kind of thrown off a little bit, isn't it? When there was, you know, three years of basically no touring at all during mm-hmm. the pandemic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. What was that like for you? To not be able to uh, to tour and, you know, you're used to being on the road as you've mm-hmm. been since you were teenagers. Well, it was a bit special because for us, like, it kind of coincided with Clara having, like, a being burnt out. So we canceled the whole tour the summer before the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. So we were already kind of on a break yeah. from touring. Yeah. Um, and then I got pregnant. So we were anyway, we were going to be during a, a break from touring yeah. anyway. Yeah. So in some ways, the timing was good for us. Yeah. I mean, uh, but it was in, still in very a, difficult, of in course. A, in the sense that there was no outside pressure yeah. for me to tour when I was not in a position to tour. But, I mean, obviously it was a very, very scary time to be a person in the world yeah. in general. But for us personally, you know, with Joanna becoming a mom and then I, mm-hmm. me, just not having the pressure from the outside to, to tour was, was probably a good thing for me to just be forced to take a real long break and... To gain some perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And we got so much time to make the new record as well. Mm. You know, we, we could really, really, we didn't have to stress anything. Yeah. So the record is a little bit different because most of your records you've done in the States, haven't you? Yeah. So you recorded this in, in Sweden. So how was that different? Well, before, you know, we'd gone to the U.S. and we had like 10 days or two weeks. Yeah. Or you know, sometimes a month to make a record, but this time we could just kind of stretch it out over months. And we had kind of like a nine to five schedule, which was great. It um, was, it was, it was a different way yeah. of making a record, having that amount of time to kind of go back to, to songs. Like, like a lot of times, um, like, we'll, you know, we try to record songs and if it just doesn't, we don't find the right arrangement or production for it. We, we don't use it. But for this, it was like, we could keep trying new things with, with the songs and, it was a different way of working, but it was it was really nice. So tell us about about uh, the Palomino album. It um, maybe is a little more rock, maybe a little more pop than some of your previous. How would you explain it? Yeah, we had this. Uh, we made the decision not to have um, any pedal steel on the record, and no, what was it? Brushes on the drums. Mm, like we yeah. wanted to try a different sound because we felt like the pedal. We love the pedal steel, and we miss it now. Yeah, but <laughs> we just felt like it was time to try something new, and we wanted to go and kind of an 80s direction because it was something that we'd never done before we kind of actually hated the 80s sound um back yeah in the the, day. there's the, yeah. The, the drums you yeah, know, yeah. The, the, you know it, was, it was the kind of music that our parents made you know and our dad made yeah and, and listened to yeah so we kind of wanted to rebel against that by making like folk music which is funny but um as you grow older and wiser you know you accept more genres and mm-hmm. we just felt like it was fun um but then the record isn't fully like an 80s record like we just didn't fit all the songs no so it has some more country sounding ones as well i think apart from no pedal steel and no brushes i think the the general idea was to not have any rules and Mm -hmm. just kind of try anything um like try weird synthesizers and things and just see what happened with our songs when you added that element to it And, and not to be afraid to be like cheesy i think yeah for sure. Did you learn anything about yourselves during the pandemic when you weren't able to go out on the road and you weren't uh, doing as much? Well, we didn't in Sweden. We didn't have like um, like you guys. We didn't have a complete lockdown, so you could mm. still go out. Yeah. Things were restaurants, stores were open. Um, we didn't have face masks, mm. so it wasn't like as drastic as for the rest of the world. I mean, we were the only country in the world that had mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. So I personally didn't experience a huge change. Like yeah. I probably saw 
people just as I used to. Um, but you're I, outside mostly. Yeah, we, we saw I did it. I was a little bit scared, more scared. Yeah. But I'm diabetic too, so I've, I've, I like I was, yeah, in a different position. But I, uh, I mean, I think it kind of it was nice for us because we have been on the road mm -hmm. since we were teenagers. So for us to kind of have time and space to just be and also be at home and like I think it was the first time we were in the same place for like two years yeah we didn't go yeah. anywhere it, it that never ever happened and it was a little like weird at first yeah yeah um but also in a way nice <laughs> for us well we kind of finally like built a home at home yeah. like I feel like yeah. we have this base now that we can return to and before mm -hmm. we've kind of felt like we didn't belong anywhere in the world when you're constantly traveling it's a bit confusing. I can yeah. see that. You yeah. Know, one thing I learned over the pandemic is how much I enjoy just sitting at home, chilling out, listening to records. Yeah. Yes. Putting an actual record and, yeah. you know, we couldn't really go out. So mm -hmm. it was just a matter of getting used to being at home. And I found I didn't really miss that was what was going on in the outside world nearly yeah. as much as I thought I would. Yeah. yeah. So I found, sure. found that interesting. Now that you're back on the road, I see that, uh, you know, so many of your dates are sold out in the low ticket alerts. That must feel good when you, you know, been off the road for a while huh it's amazing incredible we didn't expect oh it my God, we no. were kind of scared having been gone so long that people wouldn't return yeah and now it's just like i feel like this, these are the best crowds we've ever had yeah like they're they're so excited and passionate and i feel like it's a new generation of people like maybe who grew up during the pandemic like young girls who haven't been to that many shows and they have just so much energy and they like dress up and they're so excited, excited. And they give us and gifts and it's like oh, oh that's awesome it's amazing. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. These are the best shows we've mm -hmm. ever done, for yeah. sure. Do you have any highlights on this particular tour? You're mentioning Radio City. Yeah, Radio City was special just because that venue is so, I mean. I mean, you just come out on stage yeah. and it's like you just Your jaw drops. Like it's, like, it's just insane. It's so grand and big. Yeah. But also, like, yeah. it was so, because I had really, I was really scared and nervous for it because it's a seated crowd and it's in New York and you think like, oh, well, they've seen any, everything, you know, they don't, they don't care about you. But then we came out and they were like standing up already and like smiling and cheering. Yeah. And it was such a warm room. Like a it, warm really it really was. It really in the was. room. So that was a really special moment. For so us. I imagine the nerves went away right away when you get a reaction. I like was still that, a bit huh? nervous just because it was still, New yeah, York. Like sure. you don't want to mess up in New York. But like also just seeing the marquee like outside in Times Square and having like first aid kit. It was, it's weird. Yeah. It's weird. I'll I never forget that. I never get used to it. I never no. do. I don't want to get used to it, but it's still like strange to me <laughs> yeah joanna you said a while ago i read this in, in an interview you did a while back it says our dream was to play music and do exactly what we're doing now then you mentioned everything we've ever wanted as kids has happened so now that you've done it all yeah what's next <laughs> uh honestly we just want to keep going and mm -hmm. keep doing it um like we don't i think it's good that claire and i i think we stay pretty grounded mm. we keep each other grounded being yeah. sisters when you're doing something like this that is so extraordinary and, and strange, um, we really don't take it for granted. And if we can keep doing this forever, like I would be happy. This is the best job in the world. Like mm -hmm. I can't believe this is our job. So you still love it? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. We wouldn't be Absolutely. here otherwise. You know, it's it's the best thing ever. And I think like the level that we're at, like these kind of size shows are my favorite. Like Absolutely. we did some yeah. arena shows in Sweden. That was fun, but like this, like th these theaters are just, yeah, this they're is more perfect. Intimate, it's, yeah, exactly. But they're still quite big, and it's just yeah, it's so fun. We could do this forever. Yeah. Hopefully, we will. Yeah. No, yeah, I saw you did uh, several tribute concerts and recorded a live album in tribute to uh, to the late Leonard Cohen. Mm. That sounds so cool. It was. Tell it us was. about it. That's I want to hear about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we were at our friends. Um, we had our our friends who have a band called Amazon who are incredible. We saw them do a show at the Royal Dramatic Theater in Stockholm. And they had this idea where they let artists come and, and do whatever they wanted, basically, on their stage. And so they said, you know, if you have an idea, let us know. And then during the show, Joanna, like Leonard Cohen had just passed away. And Joanna whispered in my ear and said, we should do a Leonard Cohen show. And I was like, yes, <laughs> we definitely should. And then um, we got to make we got to make this this show where we got to just delve into his world and we did a lot of research about his biographies and all his um, poetry books and everything yeah. and kind of we had these two actors involved as well we kind of read poetry so it became more than just like a concert it really yeah. was like a a show with yeah um, yeah with poetry like a piece and, that 
Yeah. Kind of like, you know, we never got to meet him yeah. or um, our dream was to sing with him. And now it was kind of like our way of saying goodbye to Leonard. Yeah. It was like a, a, f a funeral, funeral in a sense in a way. for us. Yeah. That we held for us. And then we <laughs> released it all on vinyl. Yeah. 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 It was an incredible experience. Do you have a favorite all-time Leonard Cohen song? Mm. I mean, probably Suzanne. I love Suzanne. I love Suzanne. Suzanne's a good one. Avalanche. Yeah. Um, one of us cannot be wrong. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's That's no way to say goodbye. Oh, I have so many. And you Famous know what? He was good to the bitter end. I tell you what, every time I hear you want it darker, yeah. no, that one oh, put that a song. tear in your eye. I know. That I song. I love that song so much. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it has that monk thing going on. He was in a monastery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's so cool. And Have you seen any of those life. documentaries yes. about him? Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What about yeah. that one on the Greek island? Hydra. Yeah, I love that one about Suzanne. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's, that's oh, Marianne, I mean. Marianne, yeah. yeah. Marianne, yeah. Marianne, yeah. So mm. good. His lifelong muse. I yes. know. Yeah. It was so good. Yes, it was. Have you ever watched the Polar Music Prize Banquet in Sweden where you're singing Emmy Lou and... It, it cuts to Emmy Lou and she's mm -hmm. got the tear rolling down. Yeah. Face. I watch it that. every day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. um, no, but uh, we, I mean, we definitely have. I mean, yeah. we didn't like when we were performing it at the time. I don't think we were staring at her. No, it's just too much. You yeah. know, I make her like, we didn't know what her, her reaction was going to be like. But afterwards, we saw it. And yeah, we talked to her afterwards. Yeah. She's the sweetest. Yeah. And she's just the best. She's so inspiring. Such an incredible she's person. So warm. And and she Americana. is. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's the best. Yeah. yeah. She is. So when you're just goofing around, you know, maybe doing a sound check or whatever, mm -hmm. what's the first song you go to? We do Disney songs sometimes in, really? Sweden, in Swedish. Uh huh. It's a common thing. Um, what else do we do? I don't know. We did trip tribute yesterday. Oh, tribute! Uh, yeah, D. tenacious D. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, I mean, it's it's kind of like a classic thing. Like you just if you have a guitar and a mic and yeah. you put it in front of us, it's hard for us not we, to like make sounds. Well. Um, yeah, but we we like to try out new songs during sound check. Yeah, um, it's always fun, and sometimes even we've written songs during sound check. Yeah, just give us a mic and we'll yeah. <laughs> So Get inspired. What was it that made music so important to you? That it's your passion. It's you always, it's always yeah, been that way. it's always been that way. We were always singing as kids and making up songs and choreography and everything. It was, it was <laughs> that was just what we loved doing. I mean, anything creative, but especially music. Yeah, and, um, I think we I, realized pretty early on that we were like not just casual music listeners. Like yeah. we were nerds. Like I remember being like eight, nine years old. That's when it started. Like I became obsessed with music. Mm. Yeah. Um, like I didn't, my friends didn't listen to it in the same way. No. And then it's just kept going. Yeah. Ever since then. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in this country have been talking a lot about uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Now you as musicians that sing songs... How do you feel about artificial intelligence? Do you feel like uh, what happens if they make music like us, you know, if it makes music like you? Um, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's scary. I think it's scary for sure. But I also think that there is something innately human that's about, I mean, our music and, and the music that we love where humans just make mistakes and are like I mean I think we are drawn to music mm -hmm. where you can you can hear that it's a real like I mean like Graham Parsons for example who yeah. is obviously one of our biggest heroes like the reason that we love his music is he made you know the if you just listen to the instrumentals it's like very classic country but then he which can sometimes be like just feel very like what's the word but just not adding. boring but like um just maybe not come across as yeah. completely genuine sometimes to me mm -hmm. but with his voice because it's like has that frailty it just it's becomes very moving yeah. and i don't know i mean i'm sure it's gonna happen but I mean, I don't, I'm not worried about our music because I think what draws people to us is that we feel, I hope that we feel real, you yeah. know, and that there's something like we don't have auto tune and we don't fix, you know, we're not mm -hmm. perfect. Like it yeah. is, it's not flawless, but I think yeah. that's what people like about it. 
yeah, yeah. it feels authentic and that the songs come from us like it would be weird to listen to lyrics that, knowing that it comes from ai like who's the you know the ai hasn't lived a life yeah yeah, yeah. And i think that's what people like about our songs is that yeah they feel that it comes from the heart and one thing i don't think ai is going to figure out is how to do sibling harmony <laughs> <laughs> you never know i mean i yeah but it's not, you're not going to feel the ache right i, I want to you know you're not going to feel the ache and exactly. the soul and yeah like yeah that. yeah i don't think so i mean but I, you never know no new technology mm -hmm. who knows where it could go yeah well so nice chatting <laughs> with you last question here's an easy one for you if you had to pick which would you see this weekend barbie or oppenheimer We've already seen Barbie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I want to see Oppenheimer. I, yeah, I'm going to see Oppenheimer when I get when I get home to to Stockholm. But um, yeah, we I mean, we made the choice, Barbie. Okay. Um, yeah, We're huge Greta Gerwig fans. So yeah, right it was on. a no brainer. Yeah. I want to thank Jake Larson and Aaron Ankrum for making us sound and look good. We appreciate it. And my name's Bill DeVille, here with Joanna and Clara from First Aid Kit. I hope your show's wonderful, safe travels, and it's been so nice chatting with you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. You too. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.